if you started at the company like I did when you were first out of college, my first job out of college, guys, was about $48,000 a year. Okay. And I quickly rose to over a hundred grand. Now, me, I asked for more and I got 11% raises, 10% raises, 16%, 18% raises over time because I've showed my worth. And not only that, had the data to support it and also was very, very likable. Okay. So you can do that at a company and grow your salary very large. But some companies, bigger companies, they are going to take their time to drag your salary along, especially if you aren't asking for it, especially if you aren't asking for it. You're getting promotions every single year, but it's the, maybe a cost of living increase. Maybe not even that. Maybe it's just a 2%, a 3%. But you're expecting your company to be looking out for you and say, oh, I, we're going to jack it up to 10%. If you don't ask, if you don't have a plan with your manager on getting to the next level, whether it's salary or whether it's a position, then you aren't going to get there. You aren't going to get there. You have to take control of your own career. I wouldn't have been in this position right now if I didn't take control of my own career. Nobody else is going to be looking at me and saying, Antoine, we're going to put you into this next position if I wouldn't have said so. Although my performance spoke for itself. And I'm one of the best sales reps in the company, if not the best. Nobody else is going to put me into that position but myself. I have to seek it. Had to ask for it. Had to ask for what I wanted. And I got it. Same thing for you all as well, too. Throughout your career journey, you have to ask for what it is that you want. If you don't ask, no matter how well you perform, and this is really for our military guys, too, because many of us, many of us, right, think that our performance speaks for itself. There's more in a civilian world. You have to have those relationships. You have to ask. Your performance should speak for itself, but your relationships are more important and you asking for what you want is more important than your overall work. I'm going to say that. The relationships that you have and how well you work with others is more important than your overall work. I've seen it. I've seen it. Now, it hasn't happened to me, but I've seen it. I've seen poor performers get elevated. I've also saw mediocre performers get elevated high as well, too. And I've seen great performers get elevated high once they add the relationship component to their arsenal. It's about people, guys. It's about people. So getting back to it. It's been a challenge for me because as many or as my company has add, added to my responsibilities, there's always been this constant thing of you were a kid when we hired you and we started paying you $15 an hour and now you make $67 an hour. Isn't that enough? I do have greater market value though. So it's a constant balance to point that out and make my company understand that I've spent a lot of time there. I also know their business well. I know all the specific systems and have a good relationship with our vendors. It will be difficult to replace me after 12 years. So he knows he's valued, guys. He knows he's valued. He's done the research, like many of you done, have done. You know you're underpaid. You know, you know that if you leave, your company is going to have a very difficult time to fill that position, although they will, because we're all resources that can be replaced no matter how good we think we are we can all be replaced but you have to think about it from your perspective you have to be selfish i know that changing jobs is typically the most effective way to increase your salary but i have a lot of anxiety about the idea of switching jobs my dad was in the military in the first part of my childhood when he got out of the military he did a lot of job hopping trying to find a civilian role I still remember how unstable I felt. So he has some triggers or he has some experiences in his past life by or in his as his childhood, in his childhood, from the instability of his father at once his father left the military. His father had a hard time transitioning to the civilian life in the civilian roles. And as a child, he saw that. 
And that's what's causing some anxiety for him as well, too. Still, I have to accept that if I'm not willing to do that, I'm not going to necessarily get the same kinds of benefits and increases that other people receive, even though I do feel my employer is good about listening to my needs. Here's my salary journey working in IT at a company for 12 years, guys. This is a salary journey. This may sound like you, assistance administrator, making $15.50 an hour. After an internship with the local services provider, when I was in 12th grade, I interviewed for a job at my company. I already had some certifications and college credits for career and technical classes in 11th and 12th grade that showed I was qualified. I since grown from there, and the business is healthy and expanding. My superiors have been satisfied and happy with me, and as the company has grown, my responsibilities and decision-making capabilities have increased. My job is still very similar to what I was, what it was 12 years ago. I'm responsible for buying and maintaining computer equipment, and I run the IT's department's budget now. So he has budget authority. This is almost a management role, although he may not be over managing people. He has management authority from a budget perspective, which is something that's good. My company has been good with increasing my salary as the cost of living in my area increases. Each year it goes up 2000 to 5000 a year. Guys, that's not a lot of money, especially with inflation today. That's not a lot of money, guys. Open yourself up to the market. Open yourself up to the market. His next step, making from making $32,000 as a system admin to an IT manager, making $67,000 a year, where he is now. Good salary, above the median, right? Making $67,000 a year, that puts you in the category of a B. From a grade standpoint, not bad, doing well. And if he's in the Midwest in a low cost area, that's not too bad. Even though I'm an IT manager now, I say I'm a systems administrator because I don't manage people. Again, guys, he's an IT manager and he has a role as an IT manager, but he thinks of himself as a system administrator. We also have to think about ourselves and how we view ourselves, no matter if we're on the technical side or on the business side. The value that you place on yourself is the value that you're going to get to the market because that's how you're going to sell yourself. If you sell yourself as a system admin, but you are an IT manager, you're not valuing yourself as much as you should. So how is somebody else supposed to value you? How is somebody else supposed to value you? If you say that you are a system admin, but yet you have a title of an IT manager, you go to the market, you already know who gets paid the most. It's not system admin. It's not system admin. It's an IT manager. So you have to believe in what it is that you are and you have to apply for what it is that you want and what you are qualified for. But if you are an IT manager and you've been doing this for quite some time and you think of yourself as the role that you started with, that's not a growth mindset. That's not the right mindset. And that's why you're stuck making $67,000 a year. Now, this gentleman may need some therapy because something obviously in his childhood is causing him to have this anxiety to kind of go and do something else. Change seems very difficult for this gentleman. Change seems very difficult for this gentleman. But that's what life is about. That's the only constant we have is change. Doesn't matter. Every single day, there's change. That's the only constant. And if he's afraid of that, he needs to seek therapy. He needs to seek coaching. He should book a coaching session with me. <laughs> I hope I'm out. I hope I'm out. So my company is willing to work with me on increasing my salary. Uh, they have in the past in part because I have a good working relationship with the owners of the company by now, but I know I can make more elsewhere. My wife's been encouraging me to look for years, but she recognizes that I'm anxious about job switching for several reasons. For starters, we went through a lot of periods when I was growing up where my dad was unemployed for six to 12 months at a time. It was always feast or famine with every job change. And if, and you just never knew what you were going to end up with. 
I don't want to end up in the position that I lived through as a child. You don't have to end up in that same position. You are a different person than you are, than your dad was. You are a different person than your dad was. Just because your dad went through that situation and he job top doesn't mean that you're going to experience that same thing. The good thing is you already have a job. So you can line things up to where there's little gaps in between your employment or no gaps in between your employment. That's on you to figure out. In addition, my wife has some health issues. So she is mostly freelancing now, but she doesn't make anything substantial that we can rely on. We have to assume what I make is what we have, and it encourages me to have that stability. Okay? You can have stability still with change. Healthcare costs also comes into play with my wife's health issues. I remember as a kid with asthma, we went through periods we were unemployed, and my mom was calling and begging the doctor's office for samples of inhalers. We can't do that with these $1,000 a month drugs that my wife takes. If I go somewhere else, would the coverage be comparable? That's for you to find out. That's all part of the process. More than likely, you're going to see sometimes that the health coverage isn't comparable, or it may be comparable, and it may be better, but it's for you to find out. It's for you to find out. And I think that's what a lot of people get stuck on, whether it was their father or their grandfather and so forth. They don't have the exact experience, but they take what they've heard and what they know without it being their experiences and ultimately limit themselves from moving forward. And that's what this gentleman is doing. He's limiting himself from even moving forward, from getting other opportunities because He's not willing to put himself out there on the market because he's too anxious. That's a, his problem. He needs to seek help. He needs to seek a coach. He needs to seek therapy. And if you find yourself in a position like that, guys, ultimately you need to do the exact same thing. It may not be anything that's stemming from your childhood. And if it is, I can't help with that because I'm not a therapist. But if you need somebody to guide you along the way, Book a coaching session with me. Book a coaching session with me. That's what we do to help people all the time. So lastly, you hear horror stories of people who say, hey, I want to raise. Hey, I've looked elsewhere. And management says, okay, bye. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Again, those are stories. If you've been working for a company for 12 years and they value you, and you have good relationships, you think they're going to say that to you? If you're asked for what you want, Hey, I deserve that. I should be getting paid $20,000 more. He's at 67, so that's 87,000. They may not be able to do that for you right away, but what they can do is put a plan together. Hey, you know what? Within this first six months, we're going to give you that $10,000 increase. And then the second six months, we're going to give you the other $10,000 increase to get you to what the market is paying so that you can stay with us. That's the approach that many companies will do. That's the approach that your manager and a plan that your manager may put in place for you if you know how to act and or if you know how to ask for it. And they value as an employee. It sounds like from this article that his company values him. But if he's not asking for it, if he's not doing the steps that he needs to take to get what he deserves in his mind, is still stuck on things in the past, he's not going to move forward. It doesn't matter if he asks internally or seeks to go to the open market. Guys, I wanted to just touch on this one because I know this may resonate with many of us. This may resonate with many of us. As I mentioned, I've had coaching calls where we've had to work through understanding what our real value is on the market. And I am completely transparent with you all I showed you guys last year an offer. I showed my Patreon members an offer this year. I'm not planning on leaving and going anywhere else, but I like to see what I'm worth to certain industries, certain companies, and so forth. Not only that, I'd like to be up to date on the latest and greatest interview skills and technologies, and not technologies, but techniques I'm in. So that I can coach and use that information as well because it's relevant information. 
So that's why I do it.